What is up, guys? Welcome to our NBA Season 3 Draft Review. Now, this is out late. I know I said I was going to get this up either on Monday or Tuesday, but I had recorded it initially, and I thought that it was way too long and draggy, so we're just going to jump right into it. I'm going to explain a little bit of how the draft worked, uh, if you guys don't remember from the update video. So, like I had said, this draft took place over multiple days, and we were in a Skype chat, and we were making our picks. As time went on, uh, whoever could show up at whatever time would make their pick, and then the next person would go. If they weren't around for, let's say, the next two hours, they would pick when they would get there. We had a couple of hiccups during this process. Uh, some things happened, things were picked for people. Anyway, I won't get into that, but basically, uh, we had a draft plan going into this, and it's, it's kind of hard to keep up when you have a life on the side and you're going to work and... Uh, you, it's it's hard to keep up with who's picking what, but luckily everybody was very patient with everybody's picks, uh, for the most part anyway, so uh, we were able to pick up a team that I think is already a lot better than our UPA team. Like, I would say about 10 times better in in retrospect, but, and I'll, and I'll tell you guys why, I'm planning for week one already, week one starts on July 4th. Uh, battles will be out on July 10th on that Sunday, so, and then every uh, consequent, every subsequent, excuse me, uh, Sunday after that, team builders will be up on Saturday. So you guys are gonna get two two team builders on Saturday and two battles on Sunday, unless I decide to uh, switch up the schedule. But it's hard to get battles in during the week sometimes when you have a full time work schedule. So we'll try to keep it the Saturdays and Sundays for now. So basically. Uh, I'm planning for week one already and I can already tell that my team is a lot more offensive has a lot more options and instead of struggling to find which six months to bring so that I don't get destroyed I'm struggling to find which six months to bring because everything's way too good against my opponent's team so it's it's so refreshing to have such a powerful draft so let me explain how I decided to draft this time around so I knew I wanted a Firewater Grass Core and a Steel uh, Dragon Fairy Core. That's what good teams are based around for the most part. You don't necessarily need both of those cores and they don't need necessarily need to be perfect for a team to function, but they're known to be good competitively. So I went in with that idea and I also went in the, with the idea that I wanted as few quad weaknesses as possible and this is going to sound very contradictive when you see my first pick, but I wanted as few quad weaknesses as possible. Pokemon with reliable recovery, a couple of hazard setters, well mostly stealth rocks, and I didn't want that many reliable ways of getting rid of hazards because hazard stacking isn't too common in league format, you don't have too many teams that can actually pull it off, and you're, you're essentially taking up a pick for a rapid spinner or a uh, defogger that you would otherwise not want to have on your team because of its offens uh, offensive potential, such as things like Latias, which I've learned is not as great as I thought it was, or Hitmontop, which I think is just overall bad, but no offense, Jar, if you're watching this, uh, Hitmontop works with your team, I know it does, the Intimidate is great, but anyway, I didn't want that many hazard removal uh, Pokemon, and... I think I stuck to that pretty well. Now with my initial draft plan, it's funny, again I'm going to contradict myself here, but my first two planned Pokemon were going to be defoggers. So I had it covered, at least at that at that very moment, when I made my draft plan I knew I, okay well I have two, these two defoggers, that's, that's all I'm going to stick to, because rocks aren't going to be extremely important for me, and they're not going to be too hindering to my team either with the draft plan that I have in mind. I'm going to have one, maybe two stealth rock weaknesses. Uh, like actual uh, Pokemon that are dual weak to rock uh, or quad weak to rock So I said, you know what? Let's go in with this and let's try to make it work So the first Pokemon we picked up we won't waste any more time we'll get right into this We decided to go for a mega that we are very familiar with and I'm very happy to have this Pokemon on our team because it can do a lot of different things that it's extremely versatile and I love it for its ability I love it for its bulk for its offensive presence just the threat that it poses to a team and the fact that your opponent has to plan for it. Quad weaknesses are hindering in a way, but they also force your opponent to bring coverage that they otherwise wouldn't. So, the first Pokemon we decided to get. And right before I make the big reveal, we um, we were drafting 6th. Two of the teams before us already had franchise picks, one of them which was a Mega. Three of the teams that picked before us picked their Mega right off the bat. So I was like, I'm not losing my Mega, I need this Mega with us this season, and I'm getting it right now. And we decided to get 
Mega Scizor. Now you see Mega Scizor in front of you, you're like, okay, well he has a quad weakness to fire. This is my defogger. <laughs> this is the Pokemon that I have to defog on the team. I might run into a problem with this a little bit later on in the season, and I might have to make a free, tra uh, free agency transaction as a result. But as far as reliable defoggers go, Scizor is one of them. It's, it's just actually really good because it's very tanky. It doesn't die to most hits. It doesn't die to Choice Scarf Magnezone's Hidden Power Fire if you invest in its bulk correctly. So it's got a lot of potential as a defogger just to keep hazards off the field. It's also relatively fast with a nice base 75 speed, which you think isn't that great. But in reality, this is a, I don't know what this set is, but um, if you look at this, it hits 273 speed, which is outspeeding, of course, base 70s, and with priority bullet punch boosted by Technician and the ability to Swords Dance up, as a Mega, this thing poses a threat, so people have to prepare for it. Now, of course, it also gets a very nice uh, array of coverage moves, such as Aerial Ace if I need to hit Keldeo, I get uh, U-Turn to get out, so it's an initiative starter. Uh, it also gets Knock Off to get rid of items, Pursuit if I want to run as a Pursuit Trapper one week for something else, or something uh, that I need... Let's say I need a Latios gone for my plan to work. Uh, I, I'm gonna run Pursuit on this thing. You can uh, you can run so many different things, even Tailwind. Like this thing gets so many great moves, uh, and it's just it's hard to deal with because of its bulk. The fact that it gets Roost is also really great. Uh, it, it's got its own reliable recovery in Roost, so I really like this Pokemon. And like I said before, it's a Pokemon that we have a lot of experience using throughout the channel. Uh, throughout my lives and even like throughout my competitive play I've used this Pokemon so many times and I absolutely love it so this is the Mega we decided to go for now as I said before we were gonna go for a defogger second but that defogger got sniped from me unfortunately in round one it might have been the beginning of round two but it was the wheel pick it was the very last person to pick in round one that ended up ended up getting the defogger that we wanted I wanted something to complement scissors typing a little bit give me a little bit of uh, defense uh, something that <laughs> not necessarily is uh, is resistant to rock, it's actually weak to it, but it's got very nice coverage in a league format, and it's it's uh, it, it has Manectric like coverage, and it's also an electric type. That Pokemon was Zapdos, but Zapdos got taken from us, so I had to find something immediately to replace it, and what I found was actually not too bad, and it, it's it might even be better. It's um, it's also an electric type. Gets very good coverage on both the special and the physical side, which Zapdos doesn't have. It doesn't have reliable recovery, and it doesn't get defog. But what it lacks in defensive assets, it makes up for in its offensive presence, and that Pokemon is Thunderous Eye. And Thunderous Eye is another setup sweeper, potentially, to complement Scizor. Uh, it has Nasty Plot, it gets agility as well. Uh, it gets amazing special coverage, such as Grass Knot, Focus Blast, and Thunderbolt, but it also gets great physical coverage in Knock Off, Super Power, a couple of other moves that I would have to look through here uh, to be able to tell you guys. Uh, let's see, Thunder Punch, you're not going to run that, though. Wild Charge is very viable. U-Turn is actually really good if you know your opponent's got a couple of ground types or even just one that would stun on this thing. Uh, you can run U-Turn instead to get momentum. Uh, it's got it's got a very nice move set. Hidden powers, of course. Uh, it's huge, huge 125 special attack boosted by Life Orb. If you want to run this thing with leftovers, it's good too. You can run sub on it with leftovers. It's also a very good, uh, a very good set. You you've got uh, Sludge Bomb here to hit fairies. Uh, it's, it's got Taunt, it's got Prankster, which is it, what makes it really, really good. It also gets Defiant, though, so that might be something I, I want to use at some point during the season. If my opponent wants to defog my rocks away, might be able to get a boost or come in on a uh, on an Intimidate and uh, just get a plus two, uh, plus one, rather. But Prankster is really good with Thunder Wave. Uh, that's pretty much its competitive set, it's Thunder Wave plus three attacks. But it also gets a couple of really cool status moves that allow it to uh, to utilize that Prankster ability. Uh, make it really good. Unfortunately, we can't use Swagger, but there's a couple of other things that I'm, uh, I'm planning to do with this thing. So, very offensive Pokemon. I really like it. Glad it's on our team, and it's very hard to deal with. So, wow, it gets Crunch and Dark, dark Pulse. Awesome. Okay, <laughs> so now we know that too. So, the next Pokemon we decided to get, I'm going to try to go through a little bit faster this time. Uh, it kind of came up right on your screen, so it's, it's slow, bro. We got the same Pokemon that we have in the UPA, just not in its mega form. Uh, I like slow, bro because of its defensive capabilities uh, and the fact that it's also a Calm Mind Sweeper, uh, if you play it correctly. 
It gets access to great status moves, like once again, like Thunder Wave, uh, Toxic, which pretty much everything gets. It gets access to Grass Knot and Flamethrower and Fire Blast, so you can run the right amount of co the right coverage for a certain Pokemon. Ice Beam, uh, Magic Coat isn't something you'd really run, but the fact that you can run Psychic or Psy Shock, Scald, uh, really good Pokemon overall. I really like it, and its Regenerator ability is what really makes it shine. Of course, uh, most Pokemon are competitive because of their abilities and what they can do with them. So it also gets Iron Defense. I might, I might try to use that at some point to boost my defense up uh, during the season. But it's got a really, uh, really nice array of moves. It even gets Yawn. You guys can't see that it's down here, but it gets Yawn, so it can put things to sleep uh, after a turn. So. That's kind of good. Forces switches, and because of its regenerator ability, you can get right out and go into the uh, Pokemon you're expecting your opponent to go into on your Slowbro. So, really nice Pokemon. As you guys can see, I don't have nicknames for these things yet, uh, so I'm going to have to think uh, think of them throughout the week. Anyway, uh, this so this was round three, uh, and this was part of our draft plan. Slowbro was initially in our... Uh, in our draft plan alongside Zapdos. We ended up getting Mega Scizor up until now, Thunderous Eye, and Slowbro. This league is a lot like the GBA, it's got a lot of the same rules, and um, we are also drafting 11 Pokemon, so we have the first three right here. The next Pokemon that I wanted, I knew I couldn't uh, let another round go by before I got this, and uh, I was uh, I was on the long end of uh, like the, the snake pattern was coming back to me but it was taking a while before I could make my next pick so I knew I needed a ground type to resist electric types at this point because I was extremely weak to electric types and I needed a stealth rocker because I didn't have that yet and I also needed a Pokemon that could just punch holes physically once again kind of like Scizor so I decided to go with uh, a Pokemon that I know is very good in league format it's extremely hard to switch into and if it runs the right coverage which you can't really do in, in standard OU and UU play uh, then it can demolish teams and that Pokemon is Mamoswine we got Mamoswine guys we got another ice type just like our Weavile this one's ice and ground which I think is even a better typing than uh, than ice and dark because it doesn't have a quad weakness its thick fat ability allows it to take fire type hits neutrally and actually resist ice type hits uh, the fact that you can run a choice scarf a choice band on this thing uh, which are a little bit harder to do with Weavile because it doesn't have uh, I don't think it has as high attack. It has very close uh, attack in, I think it was 120 or 125, but it's a little bit harder to run uh, a choice scarf, let's say, on a Weavile because it's already naturally fast, or a choice band because then you're sacrificing its uh, its ability to switch up moves on things. But this thing just hits like a truck and it does it very well, especially if your opponent's team is fully grounded. Earthquake can just shatter teams. Uh, this thing gets great coverage uh, in a special move called Freeze Dry, which allows it to hit uh, Pokemon uh, quite effectively that it would other otherwise only hit neutrally uh, like let's say things like Seismitoad ground basically ground and water types uh, and um, th that that move just it's so good um, it also gets other special moves like Ice Beam but it's its main assets are its physical attacks in Earthquake, Icicle Crash, Ice Shard, Knock Off uh, gets access to Rock Slide and Stone Edge if I need a little more power. It's my Stealth Rocker, like I said before, it also gets Super Power. So basically this is our physical, uh, just our, this thing is me meant to plow through teams. Like, no no pun intended with Snow and Mammoth Swine, but this thing is meant to plow through teams. And I have no doubt in my mind that it will be able to do that this season. I just have to play it correctly. Uh, I have a couple of very interesting sets for a couple of my opponents already this season that I've been thinking of, so uh, really looking forward to using Mamoswine in League type format, seeing how well we can do with it, and either Mamoswine, Thunderous, or another Pokemon that I'll, I'll show you guys a little bit later uh, are probably going to be our kill leaders this season if everything goes according to plan, so... Uh, the next Pokemon I wanted, at this point, I didn't have a very good fire resist other than Slowbro, and I also wanted to start up a Steel a Dragon Fairy Core. And uh, fairies were getting scarce and there was nothing that I really wanted to pick up at the moment, and I knew I could, I could wait quite a while before getting one. So I was like, alright, you know what, let's, let's get a dragon right away. And let's get a dragon that not only gives us initiative, but can also be a huge wall breaker, and once again can be run physical or special. So I decided to go with Hydreigon, and Hydreigon is now, we now have a dark type on the team which is extremely valuable in league type play, that's why this thing is, is tier 2 is because of its dark typing, because if it was only a dragon it wouldn't be as valuable, because of its 97 speed it's a little lackluster, uh, gets access to Roost, so another Pokemon with reliable recovery, we now have Scizor, Slowbro, and Hydreigon that can recover their own health. This thing is versatile because of its stats. 
Its stat distribution is near perfect for the tier it's in. Uh, basically, with this 92 HP, it hits incredible heights in bulk if you invest correctly. Like, you can even run this thing Assault Vest without the Roost. Normally, you're going to want to run this thing either one defense or the other if you're going to run it as a defensive wall, of course. But as you can see, it has a nice 125 base special attack. Let me put that up to max. Let's say we max that out. Wait, let's get rid of that. So now we're dealing with a 295 base speed Pokemon with, let's see here... 383 special attack, you run this thing Scarfed. Once again, it's another Pokemon that can go straight through teams. With its amount of coverage as well, it is the Pokemon up until now that has the most coverage on my team. It gets uh, Draco Meteor and Dark Pulse, of course. It's two main uh, flagship moves, uh, as a special moves, of course. But it also gets Dragon, Tailing for uh, Dragon Tail for phasing, excuse me. Uh, Earth Power and Earthquake, so I can run a special ground move or a physical one. I can run Fire Blast, Fire Fang, Flamethrower, Flash Cannon, Focus Blast, Ice Fang, uh, Super Power, Rock Slide, Stone Edge, this thing, Surf. It literally gets almost anything you need. Uh, for any given week, so it's it's very very versatile. But again, it can be run as a special wall, as a physical wall, whatever you need it. If I need a fire switch in for that specific week for Scizor to support it, I can run Hydreigon. Uh, let's say fully physically defensive against a Darmanitan. If I'm predicting it not to go for U-turn, I can switch in on its Flare Blitz, take it like nothing, and then fire off a U-turn to gain initiative afterwards. So there's a lot of different things you can do with this thing. It's uh, it's a very versatile mon. I really really like it. And I've used it before as well in competitive. It was one of the first Pokemon that I ever used on Wi-Fi as well. So it's it's very, very good. Yet another Pokemon that gets access to Taunt and Thunder Wave uh, and Tailwind so I can speed up teams. Uh, my team specifically, but this thing is, is very, very good and I really, I'm really going to enjoy using it. So I'm going to try to keep this to about 25 minutes, guys. So we're going to run through the last six Pokemon rather quickly. This next pick, though, I have to talk about because... Uh, it was one of the most important picks throughout the entire draft, and it was a moment that uh, froze me in my seat. Um, I was coming up once again on, the, just like Mamoswine, coming on the uh, longer end before it got to my pick. And at this point, I had Slowbro, and I also wanted to start to go for a Firewater Grass Core. So I told myself this was a Pokemon that I wanted initially was a Moongus. And Amoongus, Amoongus got taken from me very early, so I said, all right, well, that's fine. Uh, we'll switch it up to Roserade. Except that Roserade was on somebody else's draft plan, the person that was drafting right before me, uh, good buddy Johnny. And um, he actually found out that I wanted Roserade because I accidentally put it in the main chat when I was chatting with somebody else about my next pick. And thus, I put my next pick in the wrong chat way too early. Johnny saw it, he knew that I wanted it, uh, but we tried to make a deal. And I was gonna go for a Roserade, but we eventually figured out that there was one more better, um, well, not one more better, but one more better <laughs> grass poison type left in the pool. And that I thought fit my team extremely well at this point because Roserade is very offensive, and as you can see, the majority of my team is extremely offensive at the moment. I have a Mega Scizor, I have a Thunderous, I have a Mamoswine, and I have a, Hy a Hydreigon. And while these Pokemon can be run, uh, most of them can be run as bulky sets, they're usually, typically run as, uh, as offensive threats to your opponent's team. So I really needed something that needed a little more bulk, and Roserade was not the Pokemon for that, so I ended up getting Venusaur instead. Venusaur completes a role for my team, as a Pokemon, a, po a grounded poison type that can get rid of toxic spikes if I need it to. Uh, it can sleep powder things, so it's another Pokemon that can put things to sleep. It can uh, actually set up with growth in the sun. I have a couple of Pokemon, as you guys will see, that get sunny day. I think Hydreigon is actually one of them, if I'm not mistaken. It does get sunny day. So I can run this as a chlorophyll sweeper. I can run it with overgrow if I know that I'm going to be getting down low. If I want to run it with a custat berry uh, against, let's say, uh, I don't know. Uh, Staraptor, <laughs> and I don't know, does this thing get agility? No, it doesn't. But anyway, this thing has a lot of uh, great coverage as well, uh, getting access to knockoff. I have a lot of knockoffers on my team. I'm up to four, I think, at this point. Uh, it gets Energy Ball if I need to hit a little bit harder than Giga Drain, or even Grass Knot, let's say, for a Rhydon or a Rhyperior. Uh, I can give this thing Leech Seed for residual rec recovery for the rest of my team as well. I can run it Physical with Power Whip, although its special set is obviously better. Run it as a Phaser with Roar, I can get, which is suboptimal, but still. Gets Swords Dance, gets Synthesis, so it's yet another Pokemon with, uh, with 
reliable recovery so now we're up to four of that as well it gets sludge bomb of course uh, stab move and it just gets overall nice bulk as you guys can see right here 80 hp is is not too great but coupled with 83 defense and 100 special defense and also the fact that this thing's typing is absolutely insane uh in, in general whether it be competitive or in uh, in league type play grass poison is actually really really good uh it's one of the better pairings with grass type because it i believe removes two of its weaknesses gives it one extra one so it, it goes up to four if i'm not mistaken it has four weaknesses being flying psychic fire and ice I might be missing one, it might be actually be five, but I'm pretty sure those are the ones because it doesn't, it's no longer weak to ground from the poison and it also loses the bug weakness from grass. It gains the psychic weakness, but it loses two as a result. So its typing is really good. It's also a fairy check such as Zoomril, such as uh, Sylveon has a hard time touching this thing. It can get Psy Shock, but Sludge Bomb will do a lot back. So this thing is, uh, it fits my team pretty well, I find. With everything that I have, it's a nice defensive wall. It's something that stands. It's a it's a great pivot along with Slowbro. I have a defensive uh, Firewater Grass core starting. I never end up completing it, as you guys will see in a second. But uh, this is what I decided to start with. These are my first six Pokemon. Moving into the next round, uh, I needed something once again a little bulkier and. Another Pokemon that can set up Stealth Rocks, because at the moment I only had Mamoswine and I wanted to take that uh, responsibility a little bit away from it. So, I decided to get a Pokemon that's generally known as a an excellent lead, and also gets a plethora of coverage, and that Pokemon is... Yuxi, and Yuxi is another Stealth Rocker, just like I had, <laughs> like I had just said. It takes the responsibility a little bit away from... Uh, Mamoswine Swine from being a dedicated Stealth Rocker, so I can run it on this. With this thing's great defenses, its HP is a little bit lackluster, 75. It still hits 374 though, at f uh, 354 at full, excuse me. Uh, and its defenses being 130 give it an amazing amount of bulk if I need to run it a specific way for any given week. And I can also run it offensive because its 95 speed is pretty good. And you can run this thing scarfed with uh, just the right coverage. This thing gets grass moves, fairy moves, which I don't believe I had up until now, uh, so it's it can be my Sableye killer, let's say. Uh, I get uh, Psychic moves, of course, because that's its stab. It gets Fire moves, Ice moves, uh, gets Knockoff, so I think we're up to five Knockoff users. Uh, signal Beam uh, gets uh, Thunder, Thunderbolt, so it gets... Uh, does it get Bolt Beam coverage? It doesn't get Ice Beam, but it gets a nice move, so it technically has Bolt Beam coverage. Uh, toxic, again. A trick is cool. A trick is a really cool... Uh, Really cool thing that I might want to try maybe with an iron ball, trick something an iron ball, get basically neuter a scarfer for the rest of the game and turn my Uxie into a scarfer. Uh, gets a U turn for initiative, which is great. We're up to, I think, three U turners and a volt switcher now with Hydreigon, Scizor, and uh, Thunderous Eye. And uh, yeah, so this this thing is just very good. It's great for getting up rocks. That's going to be mostly its main role, but it's another Pokemon that gets Sunny Day. We did mention that before. We can run Venusaur as a, as a Chlorophyll Sweeper. So uh, it's, a, it's a pretty nice Mon. I like it. It's another Pokemon that gets Yawns, so we can pretty much put uh, things to sleep with a lot of Pokemon that we have. And uh, I'm really liking this thing. I like the way it looks. I love its bulk. Run with run it with leftovers. It's uh, it's pretty hard to take down. You need to hit it with super effective hits. Otherwise, you're not going to be doing much if uh, if this thing is invested correctly. So that's going to be it for Yuxi. The next Pokemon we decided to get was on our initial draft plan. Uh, unlike Venusaur, unlike Yuxi, those two were not there initially, but this Pokemon was. I needed something that I could throw a choice band on and destroy teams and just run through them. Or if I wanted to, I could run it as a setup Pokemon. I could also run rocks on it. And it's a little bit of a lower tier Pokemon, but it's a Pokemon that I've uh, come to love in these past few weeks after doing uh, a live with it and testing a certain team with it. If you guys haven't seen this live, definitely go check it out. I love the thumbnail for that one as well. It's really nice. But the next Pokemon we decided to get was yet another dragon, and that Pokemon is Tyrantrum. And Tyrantrum, look at that attack stat, 121. It's actually got really nice bulk with 190 defense and 82 HP. As you can see, it hits 370 and 368 respectively. So really, really good. But this move right here, Head Smash, base 150, ignore the accuracy, but base 150, coupled with Rock Head, which prevents you from taking any kind of uh, recoil damage, 
means that Head Smash becomes one of the most threatening moves on my entire team. It's an absolute nuke. This thing can two-hit KO... What was it? What was it that I calced it on? I don't want to give too much away from my opponents, but... It, it can two-hit KO extremely defensive Pokemon that even resist the rock, the uh, the, uh, the Head Smash. Because of the fact that if you run this thing banded with its 120 attack and you invest it uh, as a positive nature, if you run it, uh, let's say, adamant, then it goes up to 375 attack. With the choice band, you're almost at 600. Uh, you're close to... Uh, are you at 600? No, you're not exactly, but you're in the vicinity of 600 attack, and you're firing off a base 150 attack that has no recoil. So its accuracy is the only thing that hinders it. But other than that, Tyrantrum is actually a very good Pokemon because of the fact that it gets... Uh, stealth rocks it can set up with dragon dance which can also be a huge threat to some teams uh, you can run it lum to prevent yourself from getting paralyzed or burned uh, while you're trying to set up you can also run it rock polish if you're running it adamant so you give it just enough speed let's uh, take a little bit off of here let's put a little bit here 226 speed let's say we double that that goes up to what is it 552 so that's that's a pretty insane speed stat it actually outspeeds most scarfers so you can do a lot with this thing. Uh, gets access to Ice Fang, Iron Head for Fairies, which is really, really nice on a Dragon type. Uh, Stone Edge, which is still a nuke if you don't want to run Head Smash and uh, run the risk of missing. You can also run this thing with Strong Jaw, which is pretty cool because it gets access to certain Fang moves like Fire Fang and Ice Fang, which is also really cool for a Dragon type to get a move like Ice Fang. Not a lot of Dragon types get Ice moves. That's why I say that, but uh, this thing is just really cool. I really like it, and uh, I can't wait to use it and just run through teams and it's another pokemon that gets sunny day so <laughs> are we up to uh three now uh pretty much so this is uh this is the point where uh i needed to get a pokemon that had a little more speed because my team was a little bit slow so i was like okay what do i have up until now thunderous eye which hits uh which hits that nice 111 base speed because it's uh, it's faster than Latios and Latias, so it outspeeds all those one uh, those uh, base 110s like Mega Deancey and Gengar and basically anything that hits 110. So I was like, okay, so I have that. I also have Hydreigon, which is typically run Scarf. So I have a couple of Pokemon that I can, that I can already Scarf, and because of their speeds, they will outspeed faster Pokemon like Tornadus T and uh, Mega Sceptile and things like that. So I wasn't too worried on that end. I was like, all right, well, now I need a good special attacker that can accomplish a couple of rules the first rule that i wanted it to accomplish was being faster than base 100s the second role was to spin block and finally the last role was to uh, be a pseudo cleric and that pokemon is miss Magius. and i don't know if i'm saying that right because i've never heard the actual pronunciation for this uh mens if you're watching this don't crucify me man i'm sorry i'm calling it miss Magius. Uh, it's probably Miss Magius, who knows, but anyway, uh, or Miss Magius, I guess, but G.I. normally does, makes a, uh, just sound. Anyway, moving into the Pokemon, uh, we have a potential Calm Mind Sweeper, kind of like Slowbro, Slowbro, but it's a little bit faster. Uh, access to, uh, another fairy, a Pokemon that gets access to a fairy move, which is really nice. Uh, this thing gets Nasty Plot, if I'm not mistaken, yes it does, so it's an extremely fast Pokemon, as you can see, it hits 339, uh, and it also has a very respectable 105 special attack. Double that, and it becomes a huge threat. Uh, it gets access to foul play, which is cool. It gets heal bell, which is one of the reasons I wanted it. It was a fast heal beller that can heal off burns and uh, paralysis from my team if I need it to. Uh, even toxics on, let's say, slow bro to turn it back into a wall later game. So, really cool Pokemon that I, I felt like I absolutely needed. And a spin blocker is always nice to have because your opponent has to play around it. So. Uh, very nice Pokemon. Also gets Memento if I want to set up with... Oh, wait a minute. I just... Okay. Alright, we're definitely doing that on something. You guys are gonna see uh, in a minute. I'll, I'll come back to it. I'll make sure to remember, but... This, this move right here might be our ticket to winning a couple of games. Uh, the fact that we have access to Memento. We have a fast Taunter, just like, um, just like our thunderous uh, we also get access to sucker punch this thing has very abysmal physical attack as you can see it's 60 but it still might be enough to knock out on a super effective hit so uh not ruling that out at all gets access to uh thunderbolt which is very good will-o-wisp which i didn't have a uh dedicated uh burner yet 
Uh, you can burn with Scald from Slowbro, but this thing actually gets Will-O-Wisp, which is, has a much higher chance of burning. Of course, it goes up to 85%. Gets Icy Wind, which is a nice coverage move. Uh, Magical Leaf, uh, it gets Mystical Fire, so it can run this and a Hidden Power instead of having to run Hidden Power Fire if I need it specifically for one week, which is very, very nice. Uh, the fact that it gets Magical Leaf, uh, it also gets Energy Ball, I think, too, though. Uh, yeah, it does, so you'd rather run that, obviously, but uh, this thing's coverage is nice. Uh, the fact that it works as a pseudo, uh, pseudo, uh, pseudo cleric, excuse me, uh, also gets skill swap, which is kind of cool. I might need to use that at some point. Um, it gets, uh, does this get trick? No, it does not. It gets trick room, which might be cool for slow, bro. Um, also got sunny day. So there we go. We're up to four sunny day users potentially. So really cool. And um, when you guys see our next Pokemon, you're going to laugh because it's another Pokemon that gets sunny day. Uh, and I know this for a fact because we decided in round 10 to get our fire type finally. And I needed a another fast Pokemon. I think uh, base 105 was cool, but I needed another... Uh, just relatively fast Pokemon, something to hit the 100 speed tier so that I would have three Pokemon that would be faster than base 100 or one base 100 and above. And I also needed, um, you guys saw Tyrantrum. A Tyrantrum was planned with Scizor to be able to take fire hits uh, from a lot of Pokemon, so that's why I drafted it. This next Pokemon doesn't even take any damage from the fire, the fire hit. In fact, it basically hinders your opponent from wanting to go from for a fire move at any time because of its ability. The Pokemon we decided to get is Typhlosion. Typhlosion is actually a really good Pokemon uh, after looking into some of the potential sets I could run with this thing. It gets a sort of decent coverage, not so much on the special side, actually more on the physical side, which is funny because it's a special attacker as you guys can see from its stats. Base 84 versus base 109. Doesn't mean you can't run it physical, but I might have to do that at some point once again. We'll, uh, we'll look into it, but Eruption is the is the move I wanted. At this point in the draft, I was contemplating between Exploud and Typhlosion, but I definitely did not want another Fighting Weakness, as my team already had too many with Hydreigon, Mamoswine, Tyrantrum, so I definitely wanted something that uh, wasn't weak to Fighting-type hits. I decided I opted away from Exploud, uh, and also its speed kind of turned me off a little bit. Uh, if I wanted to run its specs, it had to be slow, so... I decided to go with Typhlosion instead because it has another nuke move, kind of like Tyrantrum. This uh, base 150 fire uh, fire attack that uh, is based off your HP, of course, uh, but run this with Specs and base 109 special attack, and that's pretty threatening. It's um, I think it's equivalent to Keldeo's uh, Scald, uh, if I'm not uh, not Scald, uh, Hydro Pump, if I'm not mistaken. In terms of damage on uh, on a neutral Pokemon, I think they would do about the same because Keldeo hits like base 129 special attack, but it Hydro Pump is base 110 damage, so it's very similar in that way. Um, so this is uh, this is the Pokemon we decided to get, and like I said, it's another Sunny Day user, of course. It also gets access to pretty cool cool moves like Shadow Claw if I want to hit a Ghost, uh, Will O Wisp. So it's our second Will O Whisper of the uh, of the team. Uh, gets Substitute, which is kind of cool. You can set up subs in front of things and just Fire Blast instead, and instead of having to go for Eruption or even go for Lava Plume if you want the Burn Chance instead of having to run Will O Wisp. Uh, it's very nice. Uh, gets a couple of <laughs> Dynamic Punch. I wish this thing got no guard. It would make it so much better if it could run Dynamic Punch. Be able to hit like Blissies and Chanseys and stuff. It's really cool. But uh, it also gets Focus Punch, so behind a sub that could work. Uh, so this is really nice uh, coverage overall. Like I said, more on the physical side. Solar Beam is actually pretty cool, especially in the sunny day. So I can I can run a pseudo sun team with this team. Uh, I can weaken the power of water type hits for Mamoswine and for Tyrantrum, which Mamoswine takes them super effective and Tyrantrum takes them uh, neutrally, but doesn't take them too well because its special defense is not that great at 59. So I can run a pseudo sun team if I need to. So this is pretty cool, this is a great addition to the team I found, and it's, like I said before, it's a Pokemon that hits base 100 speed, so I needed that 328 speed at level 100, as you guys see right here, it's 328, so, very nice Mon. So this is uh, this draft review is going to be about as long as... Uh, it, <laughs> about as long as it originally was, but I think I got more information in and I covered things a little bit better So I, I, I prefer this one anyway now coming back to Miss Magius's Memento This is gonna come in handy because the last Pokemon we decided to draft was our fairy finally uh, we, we wanted to complete the steel dragon and fairy core and my last two picks were lower tier picks So I decided you know what let's give a chance to some things that have never really gotten to shine in league format 
One player specifically in the GBA had this Pokemon for a couple of weeks, never brought it, and I think he might have brought it once, but it didn't really do anything. So I want to show this thing off and sh really show what it can do. It's another Heal Beller. It's a potential cleric with Wish Passing, which is nice, which I didn't have yet. And it's also, <laughs> it's, it's funny that a Pokemon like that can function as a sweeper as well. That Pokemon is Slurpuff. And Slurpuff, because of the Unburden ability, uh, makes it so that when you go for Belly Drum and your Citrus Berry pops, you end up at 75% health. Uh, with plus 6 attack and plus 2 speed. So, that's that's uh, absurd. You can also run this thing as a special uh, special Pokemon as well with Calm Mind. We already have a couple of those, but uh, its uh, coverage is actually really nice as well with Flamethrower, Energy Ball, of course, Dazzling Gleam, Psychic, which is nice, Thunderbolt, Surf, so it's, it's really versatile on its special moveset. Um, it even gets Draining Kiss if I want to recover. So, really cool Pokemon overall. Another Pokemon that gets Sunny Day, apparently. <laughs> Uh, we're, <laughs> what are we up to, like, six now? Uh, how many Pokemon in this game actually get Sunny Day? This is crazy. Uh, but this is, uh, this is a very good Pokemon because of its standard set, and the fact that I can run Memento on Miss Magius now, lower something special attack and attack, bring in Slurpuff and set up a, uh, a Belly Drum and potentially just sweep a whole team, that's pretty insane. And, uh, I'm... Curious to see if that's actually gonna work. Uh, I also picked this thing up because it is a heal beller and because it, it stops outrage sweeps with like Salamence and uh, and Garchomp, anything that goes up to like plus one or plus two. So it's just a really good asset to have as a fairy. It hinders your opponent from necessarily bringing sets like Scarfed Outrage on Salamence or Scout or Scarfed Outrage on Flygon, let's say. Uh, it's 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 presence on the team alone makes it very good. I basically had my core when I picked up Miss Magius. Typhlosion and Slurp uh, Slurpuff were just extras. They're probably not going to come to too many games. I don't expect them to, but I just like having them on the team. They're just very threatening and uh, uh, half the battle is, is prep. Actually, I would say it's even more than half the battle. I would say like it's 75%. The actual plays in the game are dependent on how well you prepped. So. If my opponent has to uh, go through workarounds because they don't know whether I'm going to bring Slurpuff or Diflosion or not, uh, then that's already a mental advantage going into the game. So I really like this team. I like it. Like I said, prepping for week one right away, I can see it's so hard for me to choose six Pokemon to bring to the game because they're all so good and they all do so well in this game. So. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm really hoping we can pull out a win in week one. Um, this would be a great start to the season. I, I'm ranked sixth, uh, I think, no, seventh in the power rankings out of 14, so we're about halfway. Uh, I think I understand why only having one defogger and it being your mega uh, obviously isn't the best thing. Like I said, Typhlosion and Slurpuff were uh, kind of... Uh, value picks for the team as a whole near the end, near the tail end of the draft. So I can always swap those out for a spinner or a defogger later. It's always potential. Uh, Avalug is still around, things like that. So I'll look into it if it becomes a problem that my opponents are hazard stacking me. Uh, but other than that, I think we should be okay. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I'm not sure. Let me actually just pause it real quick. There we go, okay, so now you can see the whole team, it's because I had my week one team already uh, in preparation. Uh, I had to delete it, I copied it, I'm going to repaste it when, when we're done here, but this is the whole team, you can see it right here, uh, it's Mega Scizor. Uh, can I bring my browser down while I'm doing this so you guys can, oh, nope, never mind, <laughs> that's not going to work, is it? Uh, let's do that, and that, so mid-episode editing here kind of unprofessional, but uh, if we go like this, you guys can actually see the whole team. We have Scizor, Thunderous, Slowbro, Mamoswine, Hydreigon, Venusaur. If you're still around at this point, I commend you on your patience, but uh, this is uh, this is the whole team. It looks really good. I, I find it's just spectacular. I love it, and I can't wait to try it out. So that's uh, that's your Montreal Habsols NBA Season 3 team, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like for me down below, cheering on your Montreal Habsols. Subscribe if you want to see our battles every single week for the next 13 weeks. Weeks, hoping to bring it into playoffs so that might be a little bit longer and uh, guys again thank you so much for watching have a good one ciao